Hello and welcome. My name is Domika L. Cunningham and I will be your instructor as we move throughout the world of Autodesk Mudbox. So today, let's talk about what we're going to be looking at. And we're going to be looking at a little bit of the interface features of Mudbox 2013 so you guys can get so you can get a little bit acclimated to how things work inside of Mudbox. Now, if you're familiar with 3D modeling, hopefully you know packages such as 3D Studio Max and Maya, Soft Image, Cinema 4D, Lightwave, uh, and there's a plethora of other 3D, you know, 3D programs out there that you can use and experiment with. Well, something that is, it's not really brand brand new to the world of 3D, but something that's kind of changing the concepts behind how we work with polygons are programs such as Mudbox, ZBrush, 3D Coat, um, as well as Sculptress and even Cinema 4D has added some sculpting stuff into it as well as Modo and other programs. But that beside the point, the, the real point about this is is that now you have a workflow that is based more off of sculpting like a traditional sculptor would work with than actually manipulating vertices um, as you would inside of a 3D package like Max or Maya. So let's talk about interface. So when you first open up Mudbox, you're going to be presented with a with a plain Jane interface. The interface is going to be your perspective viewport, which is the larger, and then you have your tray over here for layers, object list, viewport filters, and then at the bottom you have your sculpt tools, paint tools, curve tools, pose, select and move tools, and then on the right hand pane you will have your uh, trades for your stamp, stencil, fall off, materials, lights, as well as camera bookmarks. So, how do all these things work and how does this crazy, crazy program come together to, to make some really cool stuff? Well, let's open up one of the predefined models that they give us inside of Mudbox. So I'm just going to go create, mesh, and I'm going to choose this uh, basic head that they give us because they give us a basic head to start out with. Now you can see this head truly is basic. There's no ears, there's no real features of the face. There's just, you know, this simple topology that I can that I have so far. Now if I look inside of my object list and I come down here to where I see it says basic head and there's a little plus sign right here. I'm going to click that and it can sh it'll sh it'll tell me some information about this head. So I can see currently right now that this fa that this model has 2,000 faces, 2,002 faces, 2025 vertices, and then 2131 UVs. So if you're familiar with UVs, you know I'm not going to get into the explanation of what UVs are in this lesson. These are these are some things that you should know from just previous working inside of Maya, inside of Max, and things of that nature. So just know that when you bring something into, if you're bringing something into Mudbox from another package, you need to have already completed the UV texturing part of your workflow. Um, you can use other workflows inside of Mudbox, which use a format called ptext, but traditionally you want to have your model unwrapped when you bring it into Mudbox. Now if you start sculpting on this directly from inside of Mudbox, as you can see right now, if I go to my UV view, you'll see this head is already laid out. This head has already been broken apart and it's already laying down flat in our UV space so it's ready to paint on or sculpt. Alright, so let's go back to our layers. So if we look in here, we actually have a lot of different tools that let us do sculpting. So I have my sculpt brush, smooth brush, grab, pinch, flatten, foamy, spray, repeat, imprint, wax, scrape, knife, and fill, smear, bulge, amplify, and I have a freeze tool and a, and a mask tool and an erase tool. Now, are you going to be using all of these tools as you sculpt your pieces? Um, needless to say, no, you probably will not use all of these different types of uh, cutting tools. Um, or sculpting tools inside of Mudbox. The tools that mean the most, though, are probably your grab brush, your smooth, your sculpt, the flatten, your pinch, your bulge, and your knife. 
and then also your freeze and your masking tools. Those are the ones that you're probably going to use more than not, and those are the ones that I find myself defaulting back to whenever I'm working on a model inside of Mudbox. So, a little bit about interface as well. When I'm looking at these brushes over here, um, I can change. I can change. The, I can get through the first nine brushes by using the number keys on my keyboard. So right now, if I press the one key, that gives me my sculpt brush. If I press the two key, you'll see it snapped over to my smooth. Three grab, four pinch, five flatten, six foamy, and then seven was my spray. Eight is my repeat, and then nine is my imprint. And that's the last brush you can get to by directly um, manipulating the number keys in here. Now the other brushes, of course, you can just come and click on them. Um, so that's that's just a, a little way you can get through these things. Now, one thing that I would suggest, if you are using, if you're going to be sculpting on this, I would suggest that you sculpt with a digitizing uh, pen or a digitizing stylus. And what I mean by that is, if you're familiar with Wacom tablets um, or you're familiar with Wacom displays, they actually give you the ability to be able to use a stylus and in some ways get the feeling that you're actually interacting with this thing um, on a more natural level. When you're working inside of a sculpting package, you really do not want to be using a mouse. Uh, you can get away with using a mouse, but I'll tell you, it's gonna not, it's not gonna be as intuitive or as productive to use a mouse as it would be to use a um, a drawing tablet of some type or a drawing display. And you can pick up a Cintiq. Um, they're about they're a couple of you know they're a couple of thousand, or you can pick up something as simple as a bamboo, which is about a couple of hundred dollars at you know your local local stores. So. Anyway, back to our interface here inside of Mudbox. <clears throat> I'm going to go in here, I'm going to grab my sculpt brush, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you how you can change the size of this. So if you look over here, you'll notice in my panel on the right hand side, it has size and it has strength. So if I change the size over here, you'll see it changes the size of my brush. Now, this is fine, you can do that. But another way that's a little bit more interactive is to hold down the B key. So B as in brush, hold down the B key, and then left mouse click, and you'll see your brush is interactively sliding up and down. So you basically just hold down the B key, and while you have the B key held down, you can use your left mouse button to, you know, change the size of your, the radius of your brush. Now, alternately, you can also hold down the M key the M key will change the strength of your brush. So M as in material, so the M key will change the strength of your brush. So I'm gonna just make my brush a little bit a little bit bigger and let's get my turn down the strength a little bit more. I don't want I don't want it to be too strong. And let's start sculpting on my model. So you can see I'm sculpting on this and it's moving vertices out and it's displacing them and pushing them out. Now, let's say if I wanted to push these in. If I hold down the control key and left mouse click, you'll see the control key actually does the reverse. The, retro the control key makes you press in. And if you let go of the control key, it'll start to press back out like it normally would. Now, another key that's actually a really nice modifier to use when you're working with this stuff, I'm just going to undo this, all this little messed up work. So another key that's a really good modifier key is if I can come in here and sculpt something, and then I can hold down the shift. I can hold down the shift key on my keyboard, and the shift key will actually switch to my smooth brush automatically. And when I let go, it goes back to my net, to my regular sculpting brush. Hold down the shift key. I can smooth, smooth it out, let go of it, and it's back to normal. Right. So it's a nice little shortcut key to be able to work with in there. Now, something that you might have noticed, when I'm trying to sculpt this, I can see this looks a little jaggy. Um, I can actually see the polygons being moved. Now, the reason why, there's nothing wrong, but the reason why I'm seeing that is because my model right now does not have very many polygons in it. So, to fix that, I'm going to subdivide 
my model. I'm going to hold down the shift key and press D as in divide, so shift and D. And you'll see I now have 8,008 polygons. And if I do shift D again, you watch how this smooths out even more. You can see it's even smoother, and I have 32,032 polygons inside of my model. Now if, I, now if I use my sculpt brush and I sculpt this, you can see I'm getting a pretty nice sculpt in here. I can sculpt this out, and it looks pretty smooth. Now your sculpt also depends on how much you, of course, how much you, you know, press, how much strength you have with your brush, and and all those things like that. So, I can do that. Now, something that's very important about your brushes. You have your brushes, but you you also have the ability to be able to take these brushes and you'll notice, I'm going to click on my sculpt brush and then the properties, so the properties panel is down here underneath my layers. So the properties panel, I actually can come in here and turn on mirroring. I can say I want to mirror it on X, and it gives me a preview pane right in the, you know, however this is going to be mirrored. So this is mirroring on X, mirroring on Y, mirroring on Z, and then you have local X, local Y, local Z, and then tangent. Now, you, you probably want, you, you probably won't use these uh, X, Y, and Z very often when you're working on a model that's sitting at the center of the grid, but what this is really for is when you have moved a model, so say you have a model and it's, oh, I don't know, maybe it's like the the uh, wristbands on a, on a character that you're going to be sculpting on. Well, you can put this on local XYZ because every model, every piece of geometry has a global position as well as a local position, which is something that, you know, you should already know coming from your other, you know, uh, 3D packages. So I'm just going to put this on X. And when I put this on X, what you'll notice is I now have two little dots that show up. So wherever I move my brush, the mirrored the mirrored version of that brush shows up right to the other side of it because I chose X as my uh, mirroring plane. So if I do this right now, you can see I can easily come in here and you know I'll make like a little modified Hellboy or something but I can come in here and easily sculpt this out right? and then it, this the mirroring also works with every one of your tools. I can hold down the shift key and be able to smooth both of these sides at the one time and smooth them. Nothing changes if I go back and put this to off you'll see that it just works on one side now the other side, the other side's not getting scarred up so that's what your brushes um, when, you, when you're using some of your basic brush work you can do with this. So as you can see we've talked about I've, I've shown you guys the interface so you know we have our, just to recap a little bit, we have our perspective pane and then in, and to the right of our perspective we actually have start having our trays and I've got my layers, my objects and viewport filters and then at the bottom I have my trays for sculpting and painting and on the right side I have my stamp stencils and fall offs now, before we go, something that's very very interesting about fall off. So let's look at fall off really quick. So I'm going to click on fall off, and you'll see I have these eight different profiles in here. When I choose this one, so this is my fall off. Watch what happens with my brush. You'll see that my that when I'm brushing this, it's like a very very sharp edge that kind of has that same contour as what we see right here. If I choose this guy you can see now my brush is big, fat, and bold. If I just choose the one that's completely gray, it's just a big, flat brush. Or one that's kind of slightly rounded, it's going to be a slightly round brush. And then so on and so forth. So these different types um, actually come into play when you're working on your model. So you, you want to know if you're trying to make a hard, you know, a really hard, hard edge, or are you trying to just um, brush something in and just bring it in. The default one is going to be here. This is usually your default, which is, you know, number zero right here. And 
as you work and get more acclimated to the software you'll realize when you need to switch your fall offs to the appropriate one so thanks for joining me and in the next lesson we're gonna go over stamps and stencils